so if so, there I I I try to get everything as correct as possible. But if you find anything that is wrong in my slide, especially if you are the developer of a particular feature, feel free to correct me because I don't want to disseminate misinformation and mislead people. Uh, and also, if you think I miss anything that's worth mentioning, and just feel free to um, grab the microphone and say something is going on, and uh, we, we should really know about this and that. Uh, uh, OK, that's, uh, yeah. So I think we are good to start. Uh, so let me just do a very short self-introduction for myself. Uh, I have many hats. Uh, I am a regular contributor to the Zen project. I'm hired by Citrix to do that, and which is good. And I'm also now a two-step maintainer, and uh, and also ha uh, collected another hat as a release manager for four six, which uh, turned I mean this job turned out to be much tougher than I expected. Uh, so and uh, I am also a regular contributor to other open source projects such as QEMU, LibWord, and well a little bit uh, and then Linux. And my latest trophy is that I contributed a, a one-liner patch to OpenBSD to fix a very, I mean, sort of trivial bug in the trap, I mean, interrupt handler code. OK, yeah. Uh, so this is the agenda of my talk. I'll, I arrange it into three major sections or, well, items. I'll talk a little bit about 4.6 timeline and then give you some update in the latest development of various projects. And then a little bit about Zen 4.6 ret retrospective. Uh, and since Lars has covered quite a bit what I'm going to talk about, so I might just skip some of the slides and maybe just turn the last part into a discussion or something so that you, if you have anything to discuss, if any question, just raise raise your hand and then we can talk about it. Uh, so for a for six timeline, we are still targeting a nine month release cycle. The development starts on the January the sixth, two thousand fifteen, and the freeze was at, was on the July tenth, two thousand fifteen. And we cut RC1 last week, just, I mean, just before our team left for very conference and, and uh, their vacations. And the next RC is still to be determined when is that. Uh, and we hope to release this uh, 4.6 on October the 9th or before that. So the main goal of this release cycle is that we release on time because during the last release, we had very, we, we, we slipped a lot, quite a lot. So in, so in 4.5, the actual re release cycle was like 11 months, which was a bit too long in my opinion. So when I pick up this job as a release manager, my main goal was to uh, get this release out of door on time. And then if we manage to release it uh, a little bit earlier b before schedule there's there's kind of an extra bonus uh, so that we can have a shorter release cycle and we open every we open a tree earlier for contributions uh, yeah and then here is comes the, the, the development update part I will cover many things as many as many things as possible uh, so I'll cover the send code base which can, uh, which includes the hypervisor and toolstat and other stuff, and then then say a little bit about OpenStack. But I think I will just skip that part because last had many fancier slides than I do, so yeah, I don't really have anything to talk about. And then the test lab and Linux and FreeBSD. Yeah, so the the Roman update hypervisor in general, the general part doesn't. I mean, I mean. It doesn't. These features is not are not tied to particular architecture like x86 or ARM, 
So in this release cycle, we have uh, the VM ev event support, which if, if, if I remember correctly, is about uh, sending out event to user space if you access the memory or something. Oh, Thomas, you are here. So if you are, I mean, OK, that's about correct, OK. Yeah, yeah, so Thomas will talk about it later. And then also in this release cycle, we have improved XF XSM support. XSM is short for Zen security module. It's a bit like SE Linux in Linux. Uh, so it's also uh, it's developed by NSA. And uh, uh, now is the support is much more improved. So in this release cycle, we, we fixed a lot of things in the, in the default policy. And we also test it in our test colo. And the ulterior goal is to enable it by default so that we have a much secure set, uh, secure default setup in the hypervisor. And then the next thing about security is the v VTPM 2.0 support. It's a virtual trusted plan, uh, trusted plan for module support. You can do trusted boot of your virtual machine. Uh, the other thing is that uh, from Zen server team is the ground table scalability improvement. So, uh, which is done by David Rabo, if yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So with this improvement, that uh, we are now able to get like uh, uh, like a twenty, I mean two hundred percent improvement in the network throughput. Uh, in intro intro host, host VM network throughput, which is quite great. So the the original improve uh, the original throughput was like uh, ten gigabit, uh, seven gigabit when you ran when you run twenty VMs on a host and do the intro VM network throughput test. Now it it's like with this patch and the next one is like twenty or twenty. 30 gig gigabits per second. It's tomorrow. Is that 20? Ah, right. So you, you also have the talk. So, right. So I won't go into detail. And yeah. And then we also remove a very uh, desk scheduler, which we don't think no one is using that. Uh, so. And then there's the uh, x86 specific improvement. So there are lots of Intel contributions, like the Intel alternate P2M, the Intel uh, page multiplication locking, and cache allocation technology, and this and that. Uh, uh, so the alternate P2M is uh, where a particularly interesting feature because now, uh, because as far as I can tell, Zen is the first open source hypervisor that supports such features. So. So uh, this feature is, allows you to have multiple P2M, which is a physical to machine mapping table for, uh, for, a, virtual, for a virtual machine. And that, this feature ena enables you to do a zero foot plane uh, guest memory at, uh, introspection. And also it, would, it enables some possibilities to implement the high performance NFV applications. And then, Next thing is the page multiplication logging stuff. Uh, uh, it's about, it's an Intel hardware features that, uh, that is used to lock dirty bitmaps so that you, you, you don't need to do it in, with software so that you can have improved performance when you do migrations and uh, maybe some other stuff. And there's the cache allocation technology, which is about cache parti partitioning and uh, QoS. OK, uh, and the memory bandwidth monitoring also falls into the same category. And the re reserve memory region reporting is about legacy device pass-through, like, like USB and graphic cards. Uh, the next thing is virtual performance monitoring units, which is contributed by Oracle, that allows you to profile the hypervisor and uh, and the guest with with the 
with the perf to include it in Linux kernel, but that perf2 part is not yet there, which is under development. And then the final thing is the virtual NUMA for HVM guest, which allows you to uh, conjure up a virtual topology of NUMA, a virtual, conjure up a virtual NUMA topology for the HVM guest. And then here's the ARM side of Im improvements. We've successfully merged the pass-through for non-PCI devices and ARM Git V2 and on Git V3 support. We also re-enables 32-bit user space in 64-bit guest support. And uh, Linaro, Linaro contributed the OVMF on, on ARM patches series. We also had a bunch of new platform supports such as the Thunder X and Huawei and Zilix SOC platforms. So, did I mix anything, Stefano? Oh, okay, thank you. Right, and then here's the two-step part. We, uh, so Andrew Cooper from Citrix contributed libxc and libxl migration v2. So before this, bit, uh, so the legacy migration v1 was actually a bit messy because, well, it's, was not very clearly spacked out, and then the implementation was also messy. There's no clear split between the uh, Libsyn control and Libsyn lights, which makes it very hard to maintain and develop, develop new features on top of that. So Andrew Cooper said that just, I just rewrote that whatsoever. And then he, he has a talk this morning about that. I think he'll go into detail. And then, Remerse, which is a high availability solution, has been switched to based on migration v2. Uh, yeah, I hope I, I hope that I mean, Andrew is that correct? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's all in your in your talk later. Yeah, and then libsyn line now supports asynchronous operation cancellation, which means you can cancel long long running operations. Uh, which is useful for some high-level two-step, which uh, which might have want to have some rigid control of the time and resources, and then there are other miscellaneous improvements such as Spice QXL support, H HCI Dex support. So I, I would I, I won't just read the list, and, and you've already seen that, right? And the other thing is that now we moved the mini OS tree. Mini OS out of to a separate tree, uh, so that's a move to try to foster the unikernel movement. Uh, and then after that, we we have Mini OS ARM support, which is ready to apply, but not yet not has not yet applied. And then we have another project called Project Raisin. I think Stefano is going to cover that tomorrow. Yes. And then. Uh, it's a bit, uh, so this is the things coming up, coming in the pipeline, which is quite a lot. And some of them are actually quite close to be merged in this release, but unfortunately they miss it. Uh, so I'll go through some interesting ones. For example, the X, uh, which, I mean, uh, right, so let me see. Yeah, so the first thing is the X splice which is going to be covered by Conran. Uh, it's not yet here. So, so it's, uh, it's about hypervisor hot patching. Uh, and then the, there are some other Intel features such as the graphic path-through and post-it interrupt support and P-state driver. And then there are also the PV, PV and HVM USB device path-through and colo based, uh, colo based on migration V2 and all the other things. And if you're interested in knowing some, some or any of them, just talk to me after this talk and I'll try my best to explain them to you. Yeah, let me look, have a look at my time. I still got a lot of time left, but then. <laughs> right, yeah, so this is the diff stat for 4.6 release. So it's actually, well, quite interesting because I, di I did this just before we cut RC1. So in this release, we had like uh, 91,000 lines of edit code, and then we deleted 85,000 lines of code. And in total, 
the lines of changes are positive 5,000, I mean, uh, around 6,000 lines of code changes. Uh, yeah, which is, well, great because we got many features in, but we only increased our code base size for uh, 6,000 lines. But of course, I, this is like we cheated a bit because the re removal, removal of mini OS deleted like uh, 40,000 lines of code. Yeah. So in the end, if we didn't, if we, if we don't count the removal of uh, mini OS, we probably introduced like uh, 50,000 lines of code added. Okay, this is the other stuff, like the test lab. I think Lars already covered this. Uh, so our new community test lab is live and uh, test, testing capacity is increased and growing. We now have 24 hosts in our pool and uh, we plan to get at more in the upcoming years. We also, we also have a lot more test cases. Now we are constantly testing stop domains and libver and OVMF and we also have many patch, I mean, test cases in the pipeline like distro test, which tests different distros like Debian, the, and probably CentOS uh, and all the other distros. And if you are interested in adding some uh, any or or new any other distros in the in our test in our test lab, just feel free to post to Zendivel and ask for directions and how to do that. It, it wouldn't be probably it, it probably wouldn't be too hard if you know how to write Perl and Tickle and SQL and Bash. Well. Uh, yeah, so we've got a lot of more, a lot a lot more contributions on test case, so I'm not going to go through all of them. And then the OpenStack, we had our CI loop set up and running, and moved from Group C to Group B. And last, already covered that. I'm just, I'm going to skip that. And then there's the Linux side of the development update, which is sent by Corin and I'm, I'm sort of giving the presentation on his behalf. Yeah, so I, I don't claim that I know much about every item on this, but I'll try to, uh, yeah, I'll try to explain it as clear as possible. And in 3.18, there's a send SCSI front-end and back-end support. Mm. And then in, in 3.18, uh, we, we now change the P to M from a tree to an, to an array. So there's a typo here. Should be in an array. Sorry, sorry about that. So now this improves the performance. And then in 4.6, we have preemption support for the PRIF command, C, PRIF command driver, which means some wrong running, wrong running operations, such as like uh, mapping memories from from other guests and destroying a guest with a lot of memory won't cause soft lockup in the in the Linux kernel and won't trigger watch watchdog timeout and uh, which is nice and then this PAT runtime support which I have no idea what it, what is it about <laughs> yeah I'm very, yeah honestly I don't know what that, what that means and then this Zen pet support. So now write combine, sorry, another typo here. Write combine for GPU and infinite bands works. And then for one, we have added SAM PV epic support. And we also improved the performance of MMAP cores and then update hypervisor symbols so that they can show up probably under perf. In fourth two, uh, we added SAM block front multi-page ring, multi ring support so that, uh, so I was told that the the performance improved by uh, 200, 250%. Well, and then we also had a fix to fix the known persistent ground use case. And also have a bunch of cleanups in preparation for the 64K pages support on ARM. And then in 4.3, we had the same blockfront multi-queue support, which makes, use, make, which makes use of the Linux kernel multi-queue multi block API to further improve the performance. And then 
we also add in the P2M PV guest support so that it can address 512 gigabytes of memory or more. And then there's the VPMU kernel support so that you can profile the kernel, but the perf tool is still to be done. And then the next thing is the 64K kilobyte page support for ARM. And then here's the development update for, for, for FreeBS, the which I got from Roger. And which, I mean, I think most of them targets for FreeBSD 11, which will be released next year. So now we has, I think, I think Roger has committed experimental PVH DOM0 and DOMU support. And then some third party, John Baldwin, removed the classic i386 PV port support. And then Colin Percival added in indirect descriptor support for block from, so that FreeBSD has better uh, block driver performance. And then Roger also removed some very broken FreeBSD specific extensions. And then Julian worked work a little bit on ARM32 and ARM64 guest support. It's still under development. Okay, uh, I think that's all for the uh, development update part. Do I miss anything that worth mentioning? Okay, no? Right. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just want to go a little bit into the retrospective. So this, these are my very personal ob observation in this release that, uh, that I want to talk a little bit about. Again, this is a very personal ob observation. To get a really, I mean, to get a full picture, we need more numbers. So, and, and I think Lars is working on that. Uh, but uh, I do want to mention a little bit about my, some of my personal ob observations and feeling and thoughts about that. Uh, and feel free to discuss this here and uh, after this section with me and Lars. So now what, what, uh, what I think now Wender has the desire to use upstream Zen to ship features to their customers and users. And that, that means if they miss the release, they has very sort of have a bigger impact than before for them. So if they miss the release, they, they might miss the sales goal, they, may, they might miss the, they might break their promise to their customers. So now I think we, 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 we fully appreciate that. And uh, I myself with my maintainer's hat on, uh, would like to help them as much as possible to upstream their features. For example, uh, yeah. So actually, all our maintainers are very keen on helping them upstream their features, such as uh, such as providing many feedbacks on the design and uh, and the actual code, and the discussion on how to move forward if if we have deadlock or something. But we do have a bottom line: is that uh, everything the everything every decision we make is still based on techni technical merit. That means we we normally don't you don't you to critical pressures, and uh, we, we would like to keep it that way. And uh, because, well, Zen is now used by many vendors, we, we, we do want to have a very neutral process and neutral, open, and transparent process to handle this kind of things. So I think making decisions based on technical merit is the best approach for all the vendors and players in this field. And then we, I also think, well, uh, we all, we, uh, I as a maintainer and release manager and all the maintain, other maintainers and contributors may all have the feelings that it's getting harder and harder to upstream a feature in Zen. And then that would build up tensions and frustration dur during the process, which is not very good in the long term. So normally now, if you want to upstream a, a feature which sort of big, like uh, big features, which involves complex design and many code changes, you would need many iterations. So as far as I can tell, the highest record 
I know is 25 iterations so far. <laughs> yeah, but normally uh, for big features, we, it would probably take eight to 10 iterations. That's about normal. But we don't know yet why it's, take, it's, it's getting harder to upstream a feature. It could be that our maintainers are being pickier than before because we are more argumentative, it's like arguing over very small things like coding style and uh, how, we, how we do certain things, by shedding too much, or submitters just don't address all comments because they keep ignoring comments and uh, because, because I don't know why, or it could be both. And the other thing is that we might response a lot slower than before because, well, maybe just because we have a lot more contributions but not enough reviewers. And then the, the things in our, the, the back, our backlog is just keep growing, growing, but, ne but never comes to, a, to the bottom of it. But yeah, we do want to encourage more people to, to do patch reviews. Uh, yeah, and, maybe, and even just, and even to become maintainers themselves. I mean, we would definitely help them if, if they have the will to do that. And then, because we changed the uh, release process a little bit, we, changed, we, we sort of scrapped the soft, release, soft freeze, and this caused some surprise to our contributors because, well, people just don't read emails or just don't read very long emails. And every time I send out my emails, people just skip to the parts that they are interested in and, and, and ignore all the other preambles and this and that, which may contain some important information. So I think this can be fixed by uh, getting better at writing emails myself and uh, writing a better wiki page about that. But uh, in the end, we still need input from the contributors themselves about how they feel and what they think, it, uh, whether they think it works or not. And then we already kicked off the discussion on Zendivel and started by Lars. We, we already have some suggestions so far, either made publicly or privately to me and Lars. It's about, yeah, so that ideas such as we should reopen the trees earlier for contributions so that the contribu contributors don't keep their code for too long and we should shorten the release cycle so that if if a vendor miss a, miss a release, the impact wouldn't be too bad for them. And uh, like uh, put together bet, better roadmap pages so that people have a clear idea what is going to happen and when it's going to happen. And also, well, maybe try to fix the release day, uh, freeze day so that we had maybe, maybe two to three uh, freeze each year. So I move, move towards a more predictable schedule for release. Yeah, so there are a lot of open questions at the moment, how we can improve and what we should improve. Just if you, I mean, we, we encourage you as contributors and uh, to join the discussion and to send emails on Zendibel or send Lars or me emails about that, about how, about what you think and how you feel about the whole thing, the whole release. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to talk about. Uh, is there any questions? No? Oh, cool. Then we shall have a break. Uh, actually, wait, one question. Uh? Are you going to be running test days with this cycle? Ah, uh, right. I think I... That's a very good question, and I <laughs> completely missed that. Uh, yeah, I think I will try to arrange a test day. Uh, for RC2 or RC3 later. Yeah, because I was too busy for this talk and uh, all the other stuff. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, nothing else? Cool. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs>